This video is meant to be an introduction to the various types of notation that are often used in discussions about derivative functions. We'll start with a non-calculus question. What is the number whose cube is equal to 51? We're not so much interested in the answer to this question as we are noticing that there's a much easier way to ask this question if you have the right notation. What is the cube root of 51? Good mathematical notation allows you to make your point quickly and concisely. So that's what we're going to try to do is to develop notation that can be used to describe derivative functions. This idea of a derivative is there, given a, an original function, there's an associated tangent slope function derived from the original function, or what we call the derivative of the function. And how does this function operate? Well, to look at an example, suppose the tangent slope of the original function at the argument x equals 1 happens to be 3 halves. That would be encoded by the statement the value of the derivative function at x equals 1 is 3 halves. That's what the derivative does. It's a tangent slope function for the, the original function from which it is derived. So the first notation we'll look at is called Lagrange notation after the Italian mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. So we'll assume that our function has a name f, then the derivative would be called f prime. And how might we use this notation? We might say something like the tangent slope of f at x equals 1 equals f prime of 1. f prime is the name of the derivative function, so we can just plug the argument 1 in and we get f prime of 1 as the value, which would be the tangent slope of the original function. Now, in this example, the functions f and f prime happen to have formulas. f of x is a cubic polynomial, f prime of x is a quadratic polynomial. And as long as we're talking about notation, we should point out that f and f prime are the names of functions. f of x and f prime of x are actually values that come out of the function once you put in an argument x. So if we were to take an x somewhere on the axis and plot these points, f of x and f prime of x are the numbers that come out as values of the function. It's important to keep straight the difference. It's a subtle difference, but there's a difference between f and f of x. Sometimes we conflate these notions when we're having a discussion, but you should keep in mind that technically they, they really represent different kinds of gadgets. Leibniz notation, named after the German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz, is a uh, different kind of notation where, say, we didn't have a function name. Say we just called it y equals x cubed minus 3 halves x. If that's our original curve, then we would write this notation dy divided by dx, or what we would read as dy dx. dy dx in this case would be 3x squared minus 3 halves. How might we use this Leibniz notation? We might say something like when x equals 1, dy dx equals 3 halves. So let's, let's think about, let's, let's look at some comments about this notation. The notation itself suggests a slope. And indeed, if you remember that the Greek letter delta is often meant to indicate change in, in mathematical sciences, we could think of the secant slope as being given by a change in y divided by a change in x, or using this delta notation, delta y divided by delta x. So there's a nice picture of our secant slope. How do you get a tangent slope? You take the limit as delta x goes to zero. The resulting slope is what we define to be the tangent slope, and our Leibniz notation is what we call that. So the tangent slope would be dy dx, and dy dx therefore is a limit of secant slopes. And so dy dx really carries a strong hint of a slope, in fact, the secant slope. But it indicates that you've taken a limit of secant slopes and you have a tangent slope. And as you've already heard me say, dy dx is often read dy dx. But you should know that really what it stands for you know, in full is it's the derivative of y with respect to x. And why would you pack all that information into a statement? Because the input and output variables could be anything. So dz dt, if you run across dz dt, then you know what that stands for is the derivative of z with respect to t that might actually happen. Maybe the input variable is time, and so t is the natural choice for that. And z is uh, the z-coordinate in, in three-dimensional space for some particle. 
and so z is a function of t and if you want to calculate the tangent slope then using Leibniz notation we'd call that dz dt. You should regard the symbol dy dx as a single object. In other words, don't try to take it apart. I mean, I guess you could look at this and think, oh, hey, the d's cancel, and that just gives me y over x. That's so horrible that we should just pretend like that didn't happen. So it, the safest bet is just to imagine that it is a single object. You can't select any part of it. It's sort of a unified thing that represents the derivative. Now, truth be told, we will eventually look at these objects in the numerator and the denominator. These are so-called differentials, and they do play a role. Even if you don't study them formally, they can, they can play a helpful role in terms of bookkeeping down the road, but we're not going to discuss that at the moment. So you should think of dy dx as standing for the name of the derivative function, and there are several ways to indicate the value of such a derivative function at a particular argument. So one way would be to just spell it out explicitly. dy dx equals 3 halves when x equals 1. You could use straight up function notation. dy dx of 1 equals 3 halves. But this seems to be rarely used. You, you don't, it, it is used, but um, perhaps not that often. And there's a, a very strange notation that gets used with Leibniz um, derivative notation when you want to evaluate at a particular argument, and that is a vertical bar to the right with a little subscripted um, element that tells you where to evaluate. So when you see this, you would say, ah, dy dx evaluated where? At x equals 1. And in this case, in our running example, that would be 3 halves. So there are a number of ways to actually describe the value of the derivative at an argument in Leibniz notation. So let's go back and look at a variation of the Lagrange notation. What if you didn't have a name for the function? Often you will see the derivative represented as just simply a y prime in this case. So if y is this cubic polynomial, y prime is this quadratic polynomial on the right. And how would you use this in a sentence? When x equals 1, y prime equals 3 halves. So let's talk about this variation of Lagrange notation. It certainly takes less effort to write y prime than it does to write dy dx, so there's a benefit. But a poorly written y prime looks an awful lot like a simple y, so you have to be careful about it. And even when you write your primes well, um, sometimes that space gets confused with exponents. So here's an equation written both with Leibniz notation and Lagrange notation, and maybe it's a more matter of personal choice which one you'd want to use, but uh, I tend to favor the one on the left even though it represents um, more work to write. Now function notation is often used in conjunction with this variation of the Lagrange notation, so if you might see a sentence that runs something like this. If y of x equals x cubed minus 3 halves x, then y prime of x equals 3 x squared minus 3 halves, and y prime of 1 equals 3 halves. So Lagrange, this variation of the Lagrange notation does have that going for it. That's often a way it is used um, in discussions about derivatives. So at this point, we've seen variations of the Lagrange notation, and we've seen Leibniz notation, and there's some room here, as you might imagine, we're going to look at a variation of Leibniz notation. And we'll try to motivate this example with the following um, example. So let's look at the possible ways to encode the question, what is the derivative of the sine function? So you could imagine using the Lagrange notation, or the variation of the Lagrange notation, or Leibniz notation, but each of these three options seems to be about as wordy as the original question, so we haven't actually got a lot of bang for the buck here in terms of being able to be concise. Certainly what is sine prime of x seems like a good possibility, that's nice and concise. It's the um, Lagrange notation with the function name sine, but you know, Truth be told, you don't see this that often. One of the possible reasons is sine squared x and the inverse sine function both use that exponent space already for very different purposes. 
And you know what? What if you wanted to take the derivative of either of these two functions and you tried to use Lagrange notation, you start getting some weird looking expressions. So even though sine prime of x might be a good option in this case, there's still the need for uh, a different kind of notation. And so here's what we'll do. We've got y equals sine x, and we've got, we want to take dy dx. And you could look at this situation and say, well, what's up with y? Why the middleman? We don't need y. We could just put sine x right into this space. Of course, it gets a little cramped, so that's not the way we write it. This is one way to write it. d of sine x over dx. That means take the derivative of the function sine with respect to x. Now, a variation of this is you could sort of slide the d dx off to one side, and, that's a, and that means exactly the same thing. So there's one possibility and another, and I actually like using square brackets, and I think I like it because it's sort of reminiscent of an old-fashioned old, uh, press. And so you can think of your function as being something that the d dx actually squeezes out the derivative, and so the derivative of f of x would be f prime of x. So here's Here's an equation that sort of links together Lagrange notation with this Leibniz notation. So how might we use this variation of the Leibniz notation? Suppose you had this fearsome looking formula for a function and you want to refer to the derivative. So one possibility is you give the function a name and then you refer to f prime of x. So we'll call it f of x and now we can refer to f prime of x. Another possibility is you use this Leibniz notation just to say, bang, there's the derivative. I want the derivative of that awful looking function. Now, you can imagine situations where the first option is preferable. Suppose you made multiple references to f prime over and over again. Well, clearly that's the way you'd want to go. You could also imagine a situation where you want to make one reference to the derivative and it's an important statement and you want to emphasize the fact that you're taking the derivative of that huge expression. Leibniz the Leibniz variation might come in handy there. So, you know, be willing to use either. So let's end this video by looking at um, an example we already understand from previous videos and we'll encode it in these new notations. So we've seen that the derivative of the squaring function y equals x squared is the linear function y equals 2x. In other words, tangent slopes of the original function are encoded by the values of the derivative. And we want to capture this idea using all the different notations we've just studied. So here they are, the variations of Lagrange notation and the variations of Leibniz notation. And you should make sure you understand each of them. Now, you might wind up with your own favorite way of writing it out. Maybe your instructor has a favorite way that, of course, you should uh, pay attention to. But in any case, you should be familiar with all of these variations, not just because you're going to see them in the outside world, but also you should be able to use them yourself because each of them has a slightly subtle emphasis on, on what you're trying to express. They all mean the same thing, but um, they all have their uses. So you should really be able not just to understand them when you see them, but to be able to use them in a discussion if you want to.